In this box is a pre-built gaming system by NSI, a company with a bit of an interesting reputation. Although, in all fairness, on paper, this does actually seem like a pre-built gaming option that won't give you tetanus. However, the problems started the moment that we went to go buy this system, where the salesperson actually specifically warned us not to buy this PC, because apparently most of the ones that they had sold were returned within the first couple of days due to motherboard harakiri, which is, um, that's never a good sign. Wow, MSI clearly has a massive box design budget, and you can tell that it's for gamers because of the dragon. Check contents if seal is broken. I don't know, MSI, I feel like if the salesperson's to be believed, you should be more worried if the seal is not broken. First off, we've got an instructional leaflet with actually really good information on it, so good on you for that one, MSI. And a bag full of accessories over here. And here's the mouse that comes with it. MSI actually seems to come with some pretty decent e-waste peripherals, so we'll have a closer look at those just now. Ooh. Several people almost died there, that was terrifying. Wow, this is actually really well packaged. That actually looks like a normal PC. That's exciting. First impressions are pretty good, if a little bit gamer gaudy. It looks a bit like it was designed to look like something designed by Lamborghini. On the front, we've got actual ventilated mesh with fans behind them. On the side, we've got some tempered glass with a decent power supply basement and more ventilation on the top. Finally, around the back, there's another fan with a fairly standard looking rear I.O. Although that Triassic period port is always a bit worrying and I'm not quite sure what power supply they're using here. However, when you open it up and remove the packing foam, there we go. Oh. I don't immediately notice a massive shortcoming in this configuration. Definitely nothing at all. When it comes to the cooler, it actually looks like it's got a variation of that terrible OEM cooler that they use in most pre-builds, uh, just with a bunch of plastic crap and RGB glued to it, so that's exciting. The motherboard looks like something you'd be disappointed to find in a Happy Meal. I'm not really surprised that the salesperson said that this seems to be the heart of the issue with this system. Under that cooler, we have an i5-10400F, which is like a pre-built bread and butter CPU. And then finally, the graphics card is a GTX 1660 Super, and it's an MSI version of the card. It looks like it's the Aero card, actually. Now, considering the current Scalpocalypse, this 1660 Super is worth more than the rest of the system, basically. So even if the motherboard does catch on fire, we still would have made a profit with this graphics card. And then finally, around the back, we have some surprisingly impressive cable management here. I mean, I would have struggled to make it look this clean. This is actually a 500 gig SSD, which for a sub thousand dollar pre-built is kind of unheard of. However, when it comes to the power supply, this one does have a suspicious lack of information on it. I don't know, if I had to put money on it, I'd say that this is the heart of all of the motherboard harakiri action we have here. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's put this back together and see if it fires up and blue screens and does all that good stuff. Now before we switch this puppy on and see what happens, I just want to give you a bit more information about the alleged issues with these systems. Now according to the salesperson, most of them get returned within the first couple of days due to regular blue screens of death. Now he didn't elaborate more on what caused these blue screens of death beyond just a motherboard issue. So it'll be interesting to see if we have that problem with this one and then maybe we'll be able to find a solution to it and see what is defective in this design. I also checked the reviews of this configuration on Newegg and there were people complaining about the blue death, so it doesn't seem to be an isolated issue. In fact, one of them lists the only pro as being an easy return process. <laughs> The main reason that I actually went to go buy this pre-built in the first place was because I was looking for a decent pre-built option and this one seemed to tick more boxes than most. Although the pricing for the base configuration, which is this one on Newegg is 1,200 US dollars, which is a little bit steep. However, in Canada, you can buy this configuration for 1,200 Canadian dollars, which is better and it leaves you room to like fix RAM configuration issues and stuff like that. 
Now, considering the fact that I was, again, specifically warned against the system, I feel like the explosion cam is, again, very necessary. But with that, let's, let's see what, what happens. Ooh. Pro Series, we've got some RGB fans in the front. Now, considering the fact that we just had to go through the Windows setting up process, that's a pretty good sign. It means that we may have no MSI venereal disease on here, which which, which will be pretty cool. Oh, never mind. We have some dragon action going on here. And they actually pre-installed GeForce Experience, which is, which is good. I mean, it means it'll keep the drivers up to date as like a default thing. But other than that, it seems like we don't have any venereal bloatware on here. So, wow, props to you, MSI. That's, that's real good. So we managed to do some gaming benchmarks on the system, which actually weren't that impressive. But we all know the reason for that, don't we kids? One thing that did really impress me about the performance on this system though, were the temperatures. Look at that, we're sitting in the mid 50s. That is with a low ambient temperature, but it shows you what good airflow can do. It can really help out a CPU cooler with sickle cell anemia. When it comes to the blue death problem, well, it seems like we may have gotten it with this one. Over the three to four hour testing period, I got two blue screens of death, which is two more than I usually get. Now the blue screens gave this error code, which could mean a bunch of things, but it seems to relate to either memory or storage issues. The first thing that I did to try and fix these problems was update the motherboard BIOS, which immediately made the problem significantly worse. Uh, we got two blue screens of death over the course of like 20 minutes. At this point, I went back onto Newegg looking at the reviews where people complained about the blue screening issues. And one of them mentioned that when they replaced the SSD on the system, it fixed the problem. They hadn't had any crashing since. So I went back to the system, replaced the ADATA SU750 SSD with a Seagate Barracuda one, and lo and behold, it hasn't blue screened since. I spent about two and a half hours using slash gaming on the system last night, and this morning I ran a hour and 20 minute long IDA64 stint, which didn't cause any blue screen or any crashes or anything like that, which is a bit weird. It seems like the problem is a disagreement between this ADATA SU750 drive and that MSI motherboard. I'm not sure. Maybe the MSI motherboard cheated on this SSD with its step sibling or something. It could also be that the Windows install that they're using is problematic. But if you do have one of these PCs that you're having blue screens of death issues with, uh, upgrading the SSD may be a solution. I'll keep using it over the next couple of months to see if the issue shows up and then I'll pin a comment letting you know if it does. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have one of these systems that has these problems. I'd be really interested to hear about that. And then finally, in terms of what MSI is doing to address this problem, I don't actually know. I mean, according to the salesperson, it doesn't seem like they're doing anything. So maybe they're just kind of pretending like there's no issue and hoping it'll go away. Or they haven't noticed that a bunch of these have been returned with issues. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. But that brings me to the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you want more David content, I stream on Twitch every Saturday and every second Wednesday. If you can't make the stream, I do have a Twitch VOD channel that I'll all have linked down in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.